One of the, one of the biggest things I tell you, one of the things that really it it, it frustrates me is we, we keep hearing about people trying to size heat pumps for the for the heat load of the house, and we we can't do this. This is part of the reason I like I said we talked about. I'm a big proponent of dual fuel. It is so critical that we understand that when we lower the temperature of the air, when we go from a rise of 60 to 100 degrees to a rise of 15 to 45 degrees, we're going to have to move twice the amount of air to get the same quantity of heat to those rooms. And so we, we, we've got to learn these things. These are things if we use true flow grid, right, energy conservatory product, and we actually run a duct analysis on the system before we install the new heat pump, then we have an opportunity to actually step in and not only sell the equipment, but sell an entire duct renovation, right? If we can sell that duct renovation, now we've taken a job that might be a, a six to $9,000 job to a, a 13 to $20,000 job because it requires electrification, requires not just equipment replacement, but system replacement. System replacement, meaning the duct system, the registers need replaced. The ductwork needs replaced. The line set needs replaced. We can't cut corners in electrification or we're gonna have headaches. Charge and airflow should be in like the two simplest things we do in our industry. I mean, this is, this this news article, honestly, uh, when I read it at first, <laughs> I, I get like borderline infuriated because I'm looking at this 23% of systems properly charged. How the heck does that happen? How do we have 23% of systems that are newly installed in our industry have correct charge? How do we have only 30 some percent that have air flows over 350 CFM a ton? We're not talking about air flows that are set up correctly for the climate zone. I mean, half the systems need air flow set at 400 CFM a ton in this country, and a good third of them or well, maybe a third, maybe a quarter of them need it set up at 400 to 450 CFM a ton. Everything out in Arizona needs higher airflow. Yet, we consider correct airflow in this study that Building America just did at greater than 350 CFM per ton. This is gonna be a nightmare when we go to do electrification. If we can't get the airflow correct, we can't get the charge correct. At this point in our industry, something's definitely wrong. We have tools in Measure Quick to identify and correct these problems. All you need to do is pick up the sword, pick up the tool, and actually use it, and you're gonna eliminate a tremendous number of issues. We're talking about 75% we could wipe out. We're talking about a 300% improvement in charge and airflow performance just by deploying software, just by making measurements. And we have tools that we can do quality, QA, QC, quality uh, assurance, quality control. We can stream the data back to the office and make sure a second set of eyes looks at that. But we have technician after technician that walks away from these jobs with charge and airflow issues. This is a travesty. It is ridiculous that we don't get these under control. One of the most Exciting things we are, we're getting ready to roll out this year is quality installation with ACA. And quality installation is, it's been around for 20 years, yet nobody seems to have uh, uh, grabbed the flag and run across the field with it because quality installation, to be quite frank, was just a, a paperwork nightmare. And you know, we, we took a close look at the framework we have with MeasureQuick and we're like, we can fix this. This is easy to do. And in conjunction with our guided workflows, we've actually made provisions now for all the data for quality installation to be entered on MeasureQuick Cloud. And so MeasureQuick Cloud is gonna be the home for all of the, insta all the installation information, all the design information, a storage place for the heat load calculation so that you have all the information residing in the cloud for that system. When a technician then goes in the field, they're able to pull that data from the cloud into their smart device. So now the technician is not trying to hand enter that we're pulling out paper and trying to record this stuff on paper. They actually have all the data at their fingertips. So now they can commission the system to an actual design, right? The quality installation starts with quality design. It starts with a heat load calculation, right? And then we do an equipment selection and then we 
design the ductwork, and then we commission the system to make sure that all those elements work the way that they're designed. There's a lot of myths in the HVC industry, and, and I, I tell you, it, it, it kills me some of the things that, that I see, and probably the, probably the biggest one is, is refrigerant charge needs checked annually. I mean, there's companies that literally go out and check it quarterly. This is absolutely ridiculous. It's, it is one of the worst practices that we've ever, ever done in our, in our, in our trade. I mean, it is, it, to me, it's the equivalent of heroin users sharing needles. We go up and we hook up a gauge set to one system and then we don't purge that refrigerant out and God knows what's in it and we connect it up to another system and we wonder why we have cross-contamination of systems. Well, we're taking blood from one and putting it in another. And then we're poking holes in systems by hooking up gauges that we don't even need to poke holes into because the refrigerant charge is totally fine. It's like going to your doctor and every time they do exploratory surgery because they want to know, oh, what's it look like inside there? I can hear the heart beating, but we know we need to check it on gauges, make sure we can actually see it's beating to make sure it's working right. It's just it's stupid. We can, once we set up a system charge correctly and we get a couple pieces of information, we can check the system completely with just temperature testing. And this is the way that we should be working our industry. And you go, well, how can you do that? Nobody's ever told me, taught me that before. Well, they've been teaching us in the refrigeration industry and the P-TECH industry forever. P-TECH units do not have port pressure ports to even check the charge. They're a sealed system. They want to keep them sealed. Your refrigerator at home is a sealed system. We want to keep it sealed. Guess what? Your air conditioner is exactly the same. It's a sealed system. We want to keep it sealed. It's a matter of making sure that once we get that charge correct, we put locking caps on there and we don't check it again that way. It's not, it's not anything but science. Once we know the design temperature difference for the evaporator and, and the CTOA, condensing temperature over ambient for the condenser, and we know the target superheat or the target subcooling, we can check the system by temperature. There's no need to hook up gauges again. In fact, there's only two times gauges should ever be hooked to the system. When the system is initially commissioned and when it's decommissioned 20 years later when we're pulling the gas out. You don't check the charge in your refrigerator. You don't check the charge on any other appliance in your house, your dehumidifier, whatever else you have, because it don't, you don't need to, and you know it. Yet you continually do this on air conditioning systems. So before you hook up your gauges next time, I want you to stop and think. And all you need to think is this. Deploy, measure quick, use some technology, because you don't have to learn all this stuff. You just have to hook up the software, benchmark the system, and leverage the power of technology. It's not hard, right? We could spend two days teaching in the math, and it's really cool, and it's, you, you can learn all that stuff, and it's, it's, it's not rocket science, it's not magic, it's just physics of what we do or you can just leverage technology and be doing it tomorrow and having your technicians doing things that are going to eliminate callbacks and my God, be a lot better for the environment.